Plants vs Zombies is not a difficult game. That's why there's mods like Brutal Mode which increase the difficulty of the game. But all these mods don't answer the fundamental question. How far can we push the limits of Plants vs Zombies? Without changing any plants, how difficult can we make the game before it's impossible? Today, we'll find out. I've changed the game so that every wave of every level is as strong as the final wave of their original counterpart in the base game. Can you beat the game even if the first wave is literally the difficulty of the final wave? Stick around to find out for some absurd methods used to beat these levels. But first, please subscribe. A hundred thousand of you lot are out there watching but only 40,000 are subscribed. So if you're already enjoying the content, just hit the button. Back to the video. We begin on level 1-1, which is a free win because the game doesn't send anything until two peace shooters are planted and they can kill everything. Level 1-2 is easily beaten with the wait strategy, as the game doesn't spawn anything until three sunflowers are planted or 50 seconds is up. Save up sun to plant peace shooters easily as just two peace shooters on each row is enough to beat the wave repeatedly. 1-3 is the first real level. A huge wave immediately comes in and we only have 3 sunflowers, which is completely impossible to defend using only pea shooters. By sacrificing 2 lawnmowers, I can concentrate the next few waves into one lane which is getting stalled by a pea shooter, giving us some valuable time to plant sunflowers in the empty lanes. Then use pea shooters to defend the two lanes when zombies start spawning again and cherry bomb the second to the last wave, then use sunflowers as stalling for your pea shooters. This handily beats 1-3 with all mowers lost. Now in 1-4 with 5 lanes, we can only pick and choose a limited amount of lanes to defend at once. The best way to greet sun is to stack all sunflowers into one lane to then protect it using a walnut. Then, I can use a pea shooter to stall one more lane. After sacrificing lawnmowers in the other lanes, I once again use the empty lanes to plant as many sunflowers as possible. This will be a common strategy for the rest of the challenge. I stall for time to get as much sun as possible to get sun to defend the 3 empty lanes before sacrificing the 2 remaining lanes. Afterwards, by using a walnut to stall out tougher lanes with 2 Conan zombies, I can barely afford to stay alive here. All of this should be barely enough to get back to another cherry bomb in the final wave to clear out the rest of the zombies without losing the game. Walnut bowling sends a ton of zombies every wave, but since it's a conveyor belt level, it's just a matter of how lucky you are until you get enough explode nuts to get a guaranteed win. With maximum stalling every wave, it actually should be quite trivial to get two explodo nuts in the conveyor belt every wave to consistently beat the level. Level 1-6 introduces the Potato Mine and Pole Vaulting Zombie. Potato Mines allow us to defend against early zombies in our Sunflower lanes. Otherwise, repeat the same sacrifice pattern I've already shown and use Walnut to protect the pea shooters. When zombies start showing up in empty lanes again, Pole Vaulters will start spawning. Against them, Activating their jump with a sunflower is almost always correct to slow their speed down. With your accumulated sun, it should be possible to get two pea shooters in every row before getting completely overwhelmed, which should beat every wave consistently. To make two and three flag levels possible to beat, extra preparation time will be given to every additional flag a level has, which is why we have two more sunflowers at the start of 1-7. But the increase in density means potato mines can't defend our sunflowers due to random zombie speeds, so we need to use walnut on the top again. I'll use the additional sun we have to start off with a snow pea instead of a pea shooter, but after the three lawnmowers go off, the amount of zombies in the two lanes is basically impossible to kill. With more masses of zombies coming in the middle row, it's impossible to defend here for much longer. This is just 1-7, and it's not looking great already. Using a walnut in front of a potato mine helps group zombies up for the short range potato mine has to kill the stacked zombies, which significantly helps defending. Pea shooting plants will help stall the bottom lane so that I can use a sunflower to group zombies up for a potato mine to get good value there while stalling the top lane with a walnut. I try to stall the bottom lane with a walnut and planting attackers to defend the three other lanes, but it is quickly too much to deal with for just a few pea shooters and we get overrun again. On my third attempt, this time I'm repeating the potato mine behind a walnut strategy on the top lane for the first three waves to farm up as much sun as possible. Not defending the top or bottom at all after three waves and just spending the lawnmower saves up enough sun to plant free snow peas. Snow peas slowdown stacks up two waves of zombies together so a cherry bomb can explode them all up. This saves enough sun to afford a pea shooter in each of the snow pea lanes to help defend. Use walnuts and potato mines to stall out the cone heads and make sure pole vaulters jump. One last cherry bomb to thin out the crowds and that's basically the level beaten, as the level won't get harder from here with nothing new to spawn. 
one eight is just one four but easier since you have potato mine and snow pea is better than pea shooter so i'm just going to skip to one nine now we repeat this exact same early game as 17 and 19, but we can use repeater instead of pea shooter, which is a far better attacking plan. Two repeaters and a snow pea allows us to easily defend the bottom lane with just a bit of help from stalling using sunflowers. And just like in 17, with snow pea stalling three lanes out, we can save up for repeaters to help defend. A repeater and snow pea in every lane should close out the level with no problems. Normally, the ultimate battles aren't that big of a problem in these challenges, but just take a look at what happens here. All the ultimate battles first wave will basically look like this. Immediately, we are forced to sacrifice 4 lawnmowers. I can only stall one lane with just the single chopper I have. I try and defend by stacking up all pea shooting plants into two lanes as Cherry Bomb will clear the free other lanes, but the pea shooting plants are not going to put a dent into this horde. I set up as many walnut potato mine stalls as possible, as they will defend for the most time to let us get as much cherry bombs from the conveyor belt to help thin out the crowds here. This combination of stalling is actually enough to survive and beat the level regardless that all the waves are literally as difficult as the final wave. With that, it's all day levels beaten. It's nighttime, or should I say, the showcase for how broken Puffshroom is. Just free slots, sunflowers, Puffshroom, and walnuts can beat 2 1. Spamming Puffshrooms in every lane while using walnuts to stall against these super zombies is all you need to survive. Without even additional time to pre plant Puffshrooms, it can easily take down the final wave of this level consistently, and you only need to spend a single lawnmower. What kind of BS is this? 2 2 has two flags, so you'd imagine Puffshroom to not be as busted when dealing with even double the zombies. But they on their own can still defend free lanes at once at the start. With the correct stalling using potato mines behind walnuts as well as puffroom spam and cherry bombs, you can easily survive up until the first flag before losing all lawnmowers. By then, it's easy to plant a snow pea in every lane, concluding the level as just an additional puffroom in every lane will be sufficient to add enough damage to beat every wave. As for 2 3, I'm not going to bother with covering more 1 flag nighttime levels like 2-6 and 2-8, as you can beat all of them with just Sunshroom, Puffshroom, and Walnuts. Obviously, you should also include plants that make the special zombie easier to kill, like Fume Shroom in 2-3, Hypno Shroom in 2-6, and both Fume Shroom and Hypno Shroom in 2-8. There is basically no variation in strategy in these levels, so let's just skip them in this video. The first wave of every 2 flag level in night is the exact same as in 2-2, so we'll be skipping to after the lawnmowers are sacrificed immediately in 2-7 and 2-9. Use Fume Shrooms here to make use of their infinite peers which makes them far better than even Snow Peas due to their low cost. Obviously, you still need to keep stalling with Puff Shroom and Walnuts to help defend against Conehead Zombies. Bull Vaulting Zombies on the other hand are easily mitigated by just planting a single Puff Shroom, so they are not an issue at all. Just two columns of fume shrooms will make this completely impossible to break through given you are planting puff shrooms still, so there's not much more to say. There are no waves in 2.5, so it's left unchanged. Let's skip to 2.7 now. In 2.7, we make use of fume shrooms once again due to screen door zombies. However, the football zombie instead of full vaulters makes this not as trivial as just plant a puff shroom. Football zombies extremely high health means that even with two fume shrooms, we need to plant two walnuts to fully kill them off. To raise our damage ceiling, use Grave Buster to clear out space to plant more Fume Shrooms and Puff Shrooms, while using Snow Peas to slow down the football zombies' eating speed. Apart from that, there's not much more to talk about in this level. And in fact, the same strategy works even better in 2-9. Infinite Pierce Fume Shrooms easily disregard the extra zombies put into play by Dancing Zombies here. On top of that, you even have Doom Shroom and Ice Shroom, the two best instant kills in the game for large groups of zombies, so that makes this the easiest nighttime level. As for 2.10, we know from Shy Guy Mass's 2 slot challenge, the original level can be beaten with just Fume Shroom and Doom Shroom. Regardless of the number of zombies that can be sent in a single wave, Doom Shroom's totally balanced design means that just one can kill off the entire wave of zombies. It doesn't matter how many zombies there are for Fume Shrooms, Ice Shrooms, and Doom Shrooms, so it should be fairly trivial to beat 210 even if at maximum spawn rate. With that out of the way, we're done with night levels. Now in the pool, we have an additional lane to defend as well as lily pads to medish now. However, we can still use puff shroom here as our second walnut thanks to it costing nothing. We don't even need to spend additional sun on a walnut to reliably take out the first few waves of a potato mine. Additional sun means that we can instantly afford repeaters and snow peas when zombies start spawning in the empty lanes again, making it rather easy to beat free one. Of course, zombies don't spawn in the water until later on, and by then we have enough sun to plant snow peas. Easy win. 
Level 3 2 is awfully similar to the previous level, but with squash. It's even better than Potato Mine because its area of effect is much larger so it's more consistent. Repeat the Snow Pea and Repeater strategy just like in the level previous, and this level is an easy win again since football zombies easily die to just a squash or cherry bomb anyways. And frankly, you just use the same strategy in Free Free but instead bring Walnut to block off snorkel zombies in the water. Not much to say other than you just do what was already done in Free 2. Now Free 4 is way harder as it's a free flag level. Just a Snow Pea and a Repeater is no longer sufficient to help us in defending a lane due to the increased in density. Very quickly, we have to spend an instant kill on every individual lane to keep ourselves alive. Walnuts are especially important to help stall zombies out in lanes where we have damage. With stalling between Potato Mines, Squash, Cherry Bomb, and Walnuts, as well as the slowdown from Snow Pea, you can only barely hold on for dear life against this many zombies at once. This buildup of zombies can be barely defended with a Clutch Squash at the last moment, and we'll still need to be very careful as we're not in the clear yet without sufficient attacking plants. But with a little bit of a break until the first flag comes, you get enough sun to recuperate yourselves a little bit and reset, and now you can start rebuilding some of that sun production. It should be possible to afford the last few repeaters for a column of snow peas and a column of repeaters shortly after, and that closes this level off. Now as for how this change affects level 3-5, well, it's basically an infinite stream of zombies now for the entire level. Just the lawnmower clears out 7 waves of zombies at once, and from there on out, just Cherry Bomb will clear the rest of the waves. Walnut stall after the first flag to farm up Cherry Bombs and the Conveyor Belt, and it's a very easy win. In free 6, we get all 10 slots as well as Gatling Pea and Twin Sunflower, and I immediately try using them. As per the usual, farm sun early on with Potato Mines and Squashes. Thanks to Twin Sunflower's extra sun production, we can easily afford Gatling Pea straight out the gate and already get very solid defense across the lawn. With 4 instant kills as well as Walnut, it is just basically impossible to lose the game from this point onwards. Zambonis really don't do much here anyways with our mass repeater army. Level 3-7 is basically just an easier version of 3-4 as you now have Jalapeno, which is the perfect instant kill for this challenge, as you can Jalapeno your Sunflower lane to keep it alive. After which, the plant order is basically the same, just Snow Peas and Repeaters, and then Potato Mine and Squash to defend those lanes, and use Cherry Bombs to explode up waves. 3-8 is where we get to elevate our strategy from 3-6. The early game is the exact same, but Torchwood is even more efficient than planting a second Repeater since it adds splash damage. This makes the level even more trivial than 3-6 already was. With Dolphin Rider Zombies, the only additional thing you need to do is plant a lily pad to make them jump early, and that's it. 3-9 is basically just a repeat of the strategy used in 3-8 but applied for a free flag level. As Torchwood adds splash damage, it basically doesn't matter that there are more zombies here. They all die just the same, and I guess one choice I have to explain is Puff Shroom instead of any other instant kill or twin sunflower, but has to activate pole vultures to slow them down. With that out of the way, let's finally move on to something new, level 310. Basically, the game at this point is asking you to survive survival endless with a conveyor belt of 310, which is completely ridiculous. Quickly, I was overrun in the first time playing this level without a proper strategy or game plan getting into it. So I was just spamming plants as if I was playing normally. After a bit of thinking and theorizing, the way to beat 310 with maximum spawn rate is simple. First, rely on one Jalapeno to defend exclusively just the second lane. This allows two squashes to then kill the entirety of the next two waves as zombies cannot spawn in the three other lawnmower-less lanes and also cannot spawn in the water. With three Peters and Torchwood set up on the top as well as two Tall Nuts, this should be sufficient damage to defend for now. Plant more Tall Nuts as necessary if they die. As soon as zombies start coming in the water, instantly use two Jalapenos to clear out the two bottom lanes to start planting three Peters there and protect your Torchwoods at all costs. This should just be enough to get 4 free beaters on both lane 2 and 5 with a column of torchwoods. From here on out, it should be a free win as this should defend off any number of regular zombies the game can throw at you. Simply play the game normally after successfully doing this build order, and there shouldn't really be any more problems once you start spamming more free beaters. This concludes all the pool levels and this incredibly shows that even if the first wave of the level is literally the maximum, you can still survive. Fog means the return of Puff Shrooms, but we need to actually sacrifice two lanes regardless of the fact Puff Shroom can't defend three lanes. That's because we need to have space to plant more Sun Shrooms, so it's a better idea to just sacrifice those lanes instead of stalling with Puff Shroom. We invest into Fume Shrooms on the third wave of the level after sacrificing lawnmowers. The Infinite Pierce helps shred down the basics, while we use Puff Shrooms to stall any Coneheads. 
it's better to just focus on defending the top lane as you can see the zombies through the fog there so you know how much you need to defend. After this, I invest into fume shrooms in another lane while using potato mines and puff shrooms to defend a third lane. I also use ice shroom here to allow fume shrooms to kill off coneheads. All of that should allow us to get two fume shrooms in every ground lane, while the water lanes are easily defendable with only sea shrooms. Not so bad for the first level of fog. The way to defend in the two flag level is somewhat similar. With the extra sun we can make in the extra preparation time, it's the best to spend that bit of sun on two security shrooms. These will help add just enough damage on top of your puff shrooms to defend off two lanes temporarily. After sacrificing two lawnmowers, it is not worth it to try and defend the two initial lanes we were defending, so just focus on sun farming and then invest into fume shrooms once again, this time in the other lanes. Make sure to bring squash, walnut, and doom shrooms so you can easily defend off football zombies, because you certainly are not killing them with scaredy shrooms and fume shrooms. And with that, this should be a proper defense that is able to defend for the entire rest of the level as you can just keep using Doom Shroom and stall zombies out using Puff Shrooms. Adapting from what I know now about using Scaredy Shroom in 4-3, I also used Scaredy Shroom to defend my initial temporary defense lanes, albeit planting them delayed. Just having that little bit of DPS is so worth it because it costs so little. With the help of Ice Shroom to stall out waves and Doom Shroom to thin out crowds, this is a foolproof strategy. To deal with the balloon zombie this level, I just sacrifice a lawnmower for it and that's about all it takes to beat it here while Doom Shrooms can take care of the rest. As for the water lanes, just Sea Shroom is basically enough to deal with anything in the water for every one flag fog level. The early game in 4-4 is just an easier version of 4-2 as there can only be coneheads and basics before the first flag, so I'm just skipping ahead here. Stopping Balloon Zombies is pretty standard. Simply bring Blover and use Blover once every two waves to blow away two waves of Balloon Zombies at once for extra value. Dolphin Riders are also pretty easy to counter. Simply put a Walnut in the 7th column and plant a lily pad or Sea Shroom on the 8th column to make it instantly jump to the Walnut. 4-5 has no waves, so we're also skipping it. 4-6 can be easily beaten with just the strategy shown for 4-3, but I decided to have a bit of fun since it gets too boring to do the same thing over and over again. I instead went for Gloom Shrooms here which are probably an even better pick, since they can easily defend off an infinite number of Coneheads not in their own row. To defend off Conehead Zombies in the lane of the Gloom Shroom, just spam Puff Shrooms to stall or a Walnut to block them off and that's it. 4-7 starts somewhat similar to 4-2, but this time there are bucketed zombies in the early game as well, making fume shrooms ineffective, making me resort to spending instants. It's better to go for Starford here for better single targeting damage. They are also necessary to kill off digger zombies in this level. But just one column of starfruits, one column of fume shrooms, and one column of scaredy shrooms should be enough to beat the level without further spending instant kills. 4-8, as you can expect, is not very exciting. It's just 4 free with a pogo zombie, and there's no difference at all since you'd still just sacrifice your lawnmower to the pogo zombie as well. 4 9 has the exact same early game as 4 7. As a bit of switch up, I used Cattail instead of Starfruit this level to have counter against balloon zombies later on. Now, moving on to 4 10. Now, you see, this is another ultimate battle, so. Wait, but hold up. Let's just take a look at what you get from the conveyor belts in this level. You have Lilypad, which does nothing against the early horde of zombies. Then you have Sea Shroom, which is even more useless, obviously. You have Cactus, which is literally just a pea shooter, and you have Blover, which does nothing against this. You also have Split Pea, which is also just another pea shooter, and Starfruit is definitely not going to be killing this many zombies. Pumpkin as your only wall plants, and lastly Magnet Shroom can't do much against this many zombies. You see the problem here? We have no instant kills at all and literally half our plants are useless or just as good as pea shooters. It's physically impossible to survive even just one wave of this crap when half the plants are literal trash and we get only pumpkins to stall these zombies out. After an extremely quick death against this insanity, it's pretty obvious that we are going to need RNG manipulation to beat this because there's no way this can be done while we get three useless seed rooms. I originally tried save scumming for every plant on the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt is not seated, so it is completely random in every attempt we reload a safe state. It's technically possible to get 50 starfruits in a row by safe scumming, so we just need to find the right combination of plants to beat this if even possible. After a while, I realized how dumb safe scumming was since I was eventually going to get the right plants anyway, so 
I just used PVC tools to slot switch to plants I need in the conveyor belt to save time. However, even with slot switching, we need to find out the right plants to beat this level, because I tried just starfruit spam with cactus in the back plus a few magnet shrooms, but it's still a loss. I then tried to set up a whole column of pumpkins to stall the zombies out, but even then, it wasn't nearly enough to kill off this massive horde of zombies. I mean, even with getting every plant I could want on demand, I am not beating this level, and it's just that ridiculous. But the level is beatable like this. I figured out I needed to get as many lily pads with starfruits as possible, as well as a few magnet shrooms against buckethead zombies. Starfruits on lily pads basically use up 4 stars when they shoot, making each of them worth a Gatling piece DPS. I make sure to move my column of starfruits all the way to the back to give the maximum time for our starfruits in the water to do damage, and then slot switched for pumpkins to stall. You have to get like 10 pumpkins in a row because the amount of zombies will completely shred up your pumpkins within seconds. But in fact, if you do slot switch for enough pumpkins, you will get enough of them to survive this madness to finally survive. Mind you, even if you survive the initial waves, you still need to keep slot switching for pumpkins to then start protecting your water lane starfruits. After that, you should be finally safe. I must have slot switched at least like 50 times in this one game, so you have to be actually dreamed to beat this in the real game without any RNG manipulation. But it is indeed possible to beat 410 with this condition. We're now on roof, and the problem is, 5-1 is the only level where you don't have lawnmowers or roof cleaners, or even the ability to replant flower pots to mitigate your losses. It's not possible for us to sacrifice something that doesn't exist, so we need to somehow defend 5 lanes at once at the start, and as you can guess, things are not looking pretty. It is literally physically impossible to beat this level, since the wave spawning mechanic means that it is a must that zombies spawn in all 5 lanes at once. No amount of safe reloading can manipulate the first wave so that it doesn't spawn zombies on all 5 lanes at once. To answer the question, is it possible to beat plants versus zombies with every wave and every level turned into the original level's final wave? The answer would be a no. You cannot beat 5-1. This is the only impossible level in the entire challenge. The only change that is required to turn this from impossible to possible is to start with an extra 50 sun, which is one more sunflower. The only reason this is the case is because 50 extra sun lets us afford one extra walnut precisely to help stall out a lane just enough so that starfruit can take care of it. Otherwise, you have to resort to just losing since cabbage pole is so bad in the cost efficiency department. Otherwise, if starting with 100 sun, you can stabilize with a cabbage pole in every lane after the initial few waves, it should be possible to beat the level now. Even though we know the answer is no, we'll continue the challenge to beat all the levels with this condition and try our best. We immediately buy the roof cleaners from Crazy Dave to immediately use them on 5-2, where the strategy here is sacrificing two lanes while defending using a single cherry bomb. Use walnuts and instant kills to protect your starfruits, and it should be quite easy to actually survive and get more starfruits. Obviously, bring pumpkin to protect starfruits, but aside from that, this level is not that hard at all, and I beat it first try using the strategy. I thought that the same strategy would work on 5-3, but it doesn't. Now, this may be strange, but that's because we start with one less column of flower pots, so we can only plant 9 sunflowers. Our sun is a tad bit more tight just because of that, and even though I tried again, I was still unsuccessful in pulling off the starfruit strategy here. After a few more failed attempts, I developed a more in-depth strategy to make this work. To set up starfruits, you need to be extremely careful with the early game instant kills. Defend wave 1 with a cherry bomb, then defend wave 2 with a potato mine and a puff shroom to stall like the walnut stall strategy in daytime alongside a squash and a jalapeno. Then stall using walnut, flower pot, puff shrooms, and pumpkins to group up wave 3 and 4 together for another cherry bomb. Meanwhile, farming up sun on the side to get starfruits up. After that, you still have to repeat the potato mine squash and jalapeno to defend free lanes before going for any starfruits. With free columns of sunflowers, then you can proceed. Keep spending instant kills and pumpkins to protect starfruits, and once it's secure about a column of starfruits, it should get much easier to defend the zombies off. 5-4 unlocks coffee bean which allows us to use gloom shrooms in day, and once again, this makes the rest of the challenge extremely easy because gloom shroom is so stupidly OP. It literally does not matter that the first wave has the density of the final wave, as Gloomshroom has infinite pierce. Simply sacrifice two reef cleaners and defend three lanes with Gloomshroom. 
plant pumpkins to protect it and save up for a second gloom shroom. Once football zombies show up, you can just use doom shroom or cherry bomb to clear them out. And if you want to AFK for the rest of the level, then just get magnus shrooms on the second column. The gloom shroom magnus shroom combo is a classic for beating 5-4, is all I gotta say. 5-5 spongy blitz spawns nearly a whole screen of zombies at once, but this is still beatable. Just not in the normal sense. If you try to spend chompers to kill these zombies one by one, it is almost certainly completely impossible because chompers are so bad at doing their job on their own. Once again, since this is a conveyor belt level, you can simply save scum for infinite cherry bombs. I just used PVC tools to replace all the seats on the conveyor belt to cherry bombs. How realistic is it to get this in a real game? Almost never going to happen, but with dream luck, conveyor belts are certainly possible to beat, just not quite fair to the player, as to say. The early game in 5-6 is identical to 5-3. You just have to plant puff shrooms and walnuts in the back to protect against catapult zombies later on, but that's about it. In 5-7, I instead chose Gloom Shroom because ladder zombies help make this a free win. We begin the game identically to in 5-4, but planting our second Gloom Shroom on the Seth of Column. Then, plant our third Gloom Shroom in the Seth of Column as well to cover all 5 lanes and use an Umbrella Leaf to protect against bungee zombies. Simply set up a Fume Shroom in all lanes on the 5th column, and after ladder zombies put ladders on both our Gloom Shrooms, it's a guaranteed win, so I sped up the game by 10 times. 5-8 has Gargantuars, but it doesn't matter since Gloom Shrooms are still the best strategy here. Just use Gloom Shrooms to defend like 5-4, then instead of planting Madness Shrooms, plant Doom Shrooms to stock them up. You should have plenty of Doom Shrooms to activate to kill all the Gargantuars the game can send when you also have Squash, Cherry Bomb, as well as Potato Mine as backup instant kills. 5-9 is a fair bit more annoying because it's a free flag level of buckethead zombies. They can immediately come and gloom shrooms can't deal with them, so you need to plant early magnus shrooms to reduce their hit points. If you get enough magnus shrooms, it shouldn't be a problem to clear the waves up until gargantuars come using the normal gloom shroom strategy from 5-4. Gargantuars are once again easily killed by just using instant kills from your doom shrooms and cherry bombs. Although a bit more tricky without more instant kills, it's a consistent counter as there are more special zombies in this level which reduces the chance that Gargantua can spawn per wave. And even better, if they come in the middle row, you can just plant a few flower pots and Gloom Shrooms can easily take care of the Gargantua without problems at all. That's about all it takes to beat level 5-9 even if the first wave of the level is as difficult as the final wave. With that out of the way, that's all levels done. Even though one level was impossible, it's still funny to see how PvZ is so easy where you could literally have to force wave be as difficult as the final wave and still beat almost every level. Just note, this was played on a modded client of the game and I actually had to pay someone to code this final wave feature into the game and it costs a lot of money, so please, consider subscribing and supporting the channel because without the support of channel members, this video would not be possible. Again, thank you to our channel members and for now, have a great day and I'll see you all next time.